kid. Han might be one of the most memorable Fast and Furious characters, but did you know that the character was actually created for another film? That's right, Han is not exclusive to the Fast franchise. Every great character has their origin story, and Han's is so good that he made a major crossover before crossovers were even a thing. So who was Han before he joined Dom's crew? Let's dive into the classic character's backstory so we can be prepared for when he gets his much needed justice in Fast and Furious 9. Han and his creator Justin Lin have a very long history together. While we know Han best from his secret racing days in Tokyo, Justin Lin enlisted actor Sun Kang's help in creating the character all the way back in 2002 for his film Better Luck Tomorrow. The Han from each film is definitely the same character, which means that Better Luck Tomorrow is actually a Fast and Furious prequel. The film can teach us a couple of things about Han, including how he got into a life of crime and why the character remains one of the most loyal members of Dominic Toretto's crew. Loosely based on the crimes that ended the life of Stuart Tay, Better Luck Tomorrow follows the lives of academically overachieving culprits as they chase life's thrills by engaging in some fun and not so criminal activities. Ben Manabag, played by Perry Shen, and Virgil Hugh, played by Jason Tobin, are technically the main stars of the film, but Sun Kang's Han also plays a pivotal role throughout the movie as the enforcer of the ragtag little group. Han is Virgil's cousin, and he and Derek Liu, played by actor Roger Fang, tag along with the group during their shenanigans. These range from petty crimes like illegal street racing to something much bigger. The group ends up eliminating the wealthy boyfriend of Stephanie, played by Karen Anna Chung, because she's Ben's dream girl. Better Luck Tomorrow ends with the gang getting away with this major crime, which sets Han up for a full life of criminal activities. One of the best representations of Han's character in the film comes from this line of dialogue he shares with Ben. People like you and me, we don't have to play by the rules, we can make our own. Han is not a bad guy necessarily, but he is willing to break some rules to get what he wants. That's what makes him so interesting. He's fiercely loyal to his friends, and as a result, both Kang and Lin are fiercely loyal to the character. That's why after his tough life in Better Luck Tomorrow, the character earned himself a second life in the Fast and Furious franchise. A fun look at how Han from the Fast and Furious connects to the Han from Better Luck Tomorrow can be seen in this little easter egg. Ever notice how Han eats a lot of chips and snacks in the Fast films? Well, in Better Luck Tomorrow, Han was always busy smoking. Now, snacks deter him from picking up his old bad habit. He's even snacking as he walks into the crew's lair in the F9 trailer. We gotta give Justin Lim props for that attention to detail. Well, we had a life before you met us. Luckily, we don't need easter eggs to prove that the two characters are connected, they're just a fun little extra. Justin Lin has confirmed with Entertainment Tonight that he considers the Han from Better Luck Tomorrow to be the exact same person as in The Fast and Furious. There was no initial plan to have Han in Tokyo Drift. Instead, Lin called up Sun Kang to read for the role of Sean Boswell, which eventually went to Lucas Black. Lin realized that he wanted Han's character to live on, since Better Luck Tomorrow wasn't getting any sequels. So, he decided to include the character in the car-centric films, leading to Han's renaissance in the long-running franchise. Hmm, sounds like Han really has a thing for being resurrected. But of course we know that things didn't work out so well for Han in Tokyo Drift. The street racer offers Sean Boswell some much-needed mentoring in the flick. He even lends the driver his car for a street race. But near the end of the film, Han's vehicle is T-boned and he gets trapped in a fiery wreck. Sean runs to save him, but he doesn't get there in time. That was presumably the end of his life. We wouldn't find out until the Fast and Furious 6, but it was actually Jason Statham's character Deckard Shaw who dealt the fatal blow as revenge for losing his brother Owen to Dom's crew. Luckily for Han, and for us, director Justin Lin wasn't about to throw in the towel after Tokyo Drift wasn't so well received. Instead, the series got a major retcon, which is why you might have been confused at first when Han showed up looking just fine in the franchise's fourth film. That's a price I can live with. But he actually made a small reappearance in the series before the fourth film even occurred. Narrative-wise, Han first went on to meet Dom when he visited Mexico. Their first encounter occurred in the Fast and Furious short film, Los Bandoleros, which was impressively directed, co-written, and co-produced by Vin Diesel. In the short, Dom and Han start teaming up together, although it's unclear why they'd even come into contact in the first place. But as they say, the rest is history. With the timeline now retconned, the fourth, fifth, and sixth installment of the Fast Saga would all take place before the tragic events of 
of Tokyo Drift, giving Han a well-earned second life. Something else these Fast films all have in common is a director. While Justin Lin hasn't directed every Fast film, he has directed every single movie Han has been in. So really, we shouldn't have been surprised when Han popped up in the F9 trailer looking just fine. With Lin back in the helm for the upcoming film and the confirmed 10th film to be released in 2021, it's safe to expect that he's going to build on what we already know about Han's character so far. In fact, Justin Lin has been spotted wearing a Justice for Han t-shirt while filming on set. For those of you who don't know, hashtag Justice for Han was a huge trending fan movement that occurred after the character was seemingly eliminated for good once the fast timeline caught up with itself. Fans were upset that they wouldn't get to see Han, sure, but it was a lot more than that. Han has been through a lot. He finally found a family he could stick with thanks to Dom Toretto and the gang. He even found himself a life partner in Gal Gadot's Giselle. But these things were unceremoniously ripped away from him. Sheesh, for someone who created and claims to love Han, Justin Lin has sure put him through the ringer. Yeah. In Fast and Furious 6, right before the character is set to move to Tokyo, Giselle sacrifices herself to save Han from Owen Shaw's henchman, Adolfson. This ends her time in the Fast franchise, and she's since moved on to playing Wonder Woman for DC, but the loss was obviously heartbreaking for Han. He still leaves for Tokyo at the end of the film, which made us all wish we could tell him not to. Tokyo is only bad news, Han! Stay away! But alas, movie characters can't hear our warnings, so Han's remains were picked up from Tokyo by Dom in Fast and Furious 7, and the family had a touching funeral for the character. And then, despite Deckard Shaw being the weasel who took Han away from us, Dom kind of forgives the character, and he becomes an anti-hero in the Fast and Furious spin-off movie Hobbs and Shaw? Yeah, this is where the justice tagline at the end of the F9 trailer comes in. If anyone deserves justice for how he's been treated and booted off the series twice, it's Han. Do you think he'll be angry with Dom during F9? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. It can be argued that Han is actually the most important character in the Fast Saga. Sure, there's Dom and Paul Walker's Brian O'Connor, who we still miss, but Han was one of the characters that helped rejuvenate the entire series. Too Fast to Too Furious was one of the franchise's worst installments. Tokyo Drift wasn't received that much better, but it had two things going for it. Awesome cars, and Han. And of course, anyone that's named after a famous Star Wars character is going to be pretty epic. By keeping Han around, Tokyo Drift has served a greater purpose, and this was proven by the series deciding to create more connections with the film and make Deckard Shaw the one responsible for Han's accident. Now, Han is interwoven in all aspects of the franchise, so of course, he's going to be back for Fast and Furious 9. So how do y'all want to play this? Interestingly, Justin Lin also brought Jason Tobin from Better Luck Tomorrow over to Tokyo Drift, but he wasn't playing Virgil. He was an entirely new character named Earl Hugh. Earl, who's good friends with Han, is also returning in Fast 9. Hmm, seems like Justin Lin really likes to keep the crew together. So, with the complicated place Han is coming from, it's likely that the character will have a lot of complex emotions to deal with in F9. Did he really overcome Dom kind of betraying him while he was away? Han's a good guy, but it's hard to ignore that kind of broken trust. Just because someone is, oh, you know, not on this earth anymore, doesn't mean we can just forget about them. It's entirely possible that Han isn't going to be so friendly with Dom when F9 hits theaters. It's even theorized that Han could be the series' newest villain. I know, I know, I know, it's crazy, right? Han, the villain? Well, we can't forget that there's some insane reasons he's still alive. A strange shadow organization like Etion from Hobbs and Shaw could be behind it. They showed us with Idris Elba's character Britain Lore that cybernetic enhancements could be used to keep people alive in the Fast and Furious universe. So let's not completely rule out brainwashing, or that Han could be a really impressive looking imposter, which would be terrible, but also really, really cool. But even if Han isn't mad at Dom, there's a very good chance he's upset with Deckard Shaw. Is he back to get his revenge? Is that why this Justice is Coming thing is highlighted in the trailer? There are still so many questions. Don't put it past Lin to make a good chunk of the movie about Han and his need for revenge. We might get to see a side of the character that we've never seen before. And I sure wouldn't be mad if he gets more screen time in F9 than he has in any other Fast film. So to find out more about Han, we'll have to wait until F9 hits theaters on May 22nd, 2020. Vin Diesel has teased that Fast and Furious 10 will be the series' final film, but that it also might be released in two Two parts. Does that mean three more confirmed films for Han? Well, with Justin Lin involved, probably. But don't worry if three more films doesn't sound like enough Fast and Furious for you. Vin Diesel also said he wants the spin-offs to keep coming and the universe to keep growing. 
So dare we hope for Han to get his own spin-off movie? Well, if the series doesn't eliminate him for the third time, then it's very possible. That is, if Sung Kang hasn't gotten tired of portraying the iconic street racer. But if he has, we can either expect a happy ending for Han, or for him to go out with a bang. Does the character really deserve an ending that's anything less than epic? Yeah, didn't think so. Who cares what other people think? Fast and Furious fans thought we had said goodbye to Han all the way back in Tokyo Drift, only to see him walking, talking, and snacking in the F9 trailer. Sure, we have a lot of questions like what is Cypher up to and how has Dom Toretto, the ultimate family man, never mentioned his younger brother? But today, we're going to be talking about the massive mystery surrounding Han's disappearance. We've seen people seemingly perish and then come back, I'm looking at you Letty, but we even saw Han's funeral, how is he still alive, and perhaps more importantly, where has he been all this time? I'm gonna enjoy this. Han Lu has had an even longer journey than most people realize since his first appearance wasn't even in the Fast and Furious franchise at all. His character first showed up in the movie Better Luck Tomorrow, directed by Justin Lin who was at the helm of many Fast and Furious movies, including the upcoming F9. Lin was such a big fan of actor Sung Kang that he invited him to read for the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift and ended up deciding to incorporate Han into the film. And now, he's brought Han back yet again. But this time, it's seemingly from beyond the grave. Ooh, spooky. Having characters supposedly perish and then come back isn't a very useful plot device, especially in this franchise. But Han really seemed to be gone for good. His car was T-boned by Deckard Shaw, and Han was caught up in a massive explosion. They even threw the guy a funeral, and nobody thought to check and see if he was really gone? That seems like a huge oversight, since the Fast family is generally more into planning heists than planning funerals. Maybe Dom was just so upset at the thought of losing his friend that he didn't have time to check out all the details like, are we sure he perished in a fiery wreck? There are tons of theories out there regarding what really happened to Han and where he's been all this time. This probably isn't Han's long lost twin brother or a hologram designed to look just like him. At first, the amnesia angle seems to be a pretty solid one. Maybe Han didn't perish in that terrible crash, but he sustained a head injury serious enough to affect his memory. The accident could have destroyed his personal effects, leaving him with no way to discover his true identity until now. After all, would Han really have let his friends think that he was gone if he was still alive? He couldn't have wanted a private place to eat his snacks that badly. Amnesia would be a simple solution to this complex problem. But there's one huge reason it seems unlikely in this scenario, and that's because we've seen it before. There was a time when we all thought Letty Ortiz was gone for good, before she turned up in Fast and Furious 6 with a bad case of amnesia. This plot device was already bordering on too convenient with Letty, so it seems really unlikely they'd rely on it again to explain where Han has been. When you guys figure it out, then I guess you can let me know. But there is an interesting theory about his reappearance and how it ties into an important part of the Fast and Furious franchise. Everyone knows that when Dwayne Johnson joined the series as Luke Hobbs, he didn't exactly get along with fellow actor Vin Diesel behind the scenes. Okay, that may be a massive understatement. Things got ugly quickly in the Fast family, and eventually, Johnson and Diesel even refused to be on the same set at the same time. But instead of drawing a sitcom-style line down the center of the set, Johnson was banished to his own spinoff, Hobbs and Shaw. But there was one serious problem with this, at least in the eyes of Han fans. Mostly, the fans had an issue which had to do with the Shaw part of Hobbs and Shaw. They felt that after Deckard Shaw brutally took out Han, he didn't deserve to have Cole Billing in a Fast and Furious spinoff. They demanded justice for Han, something that Hobbs and Shaw didn't even come close to delivering. The film tried to redeem Deckard, but how could it when Han was still gone? Vin Diesel has talked about future spin-offs, and Hobbs and Shaw are very much alive in the universe. They could return at some point in time, and it would be nowhere near as surprising as Han's reappearance. But with Han gone, Deckard's presence in the Fast universe was considered controversial by many. If he mysteriously comes back, it's obviously a lot easier to accept that Deckard isn't in prison. This is a way to offer fans justice for Han without having to punish Deckard. So, now that we know why Han is coming back, let's talk about the how, because it could also have something to do with Hobbs and Shaw, or more specifically, the character Brixton Lore. You know, the other guy who supposedly met his end at the hands of Deckard Shaw, only to reemerge later. Brixton was once an M16 agent who signed up with the terrorist organization Etion, 
After taking a serious blow from Deckard, Brixton was rebuilt by Etion and decked out with all kinds of nifty cybernetic enhancements. If this kind of technology exists in the Fast and Furious universe, is it really so crazy to suggest that it could have been used to save Han? Unlike the amnesia angle, it would be possible to add enough different details to this scenario to make what happened to Han different from Brixton's story, while at the same time, it would offer an interesting connection between the two characters who were both wronged by Deckard only to emerge significantly stronger than before. Etion reviving Han is an option, but what would be their motivation for doing so? He wasn't working for them like Brixton was, and they probably don't choose their cybernetic operatives by casing out active car fires. All things considered, it seems really unlikely that Etion would revive Han, so let's talk about other possible suspects. It would definitely have to be someone clever with access to incredible technology the average person doesn't. They would also need a reason to keep Han alive, and that reason doesn't necessarily have to be all altruistic. There's something much greater at work here. If someone rescued and revived him out of the kindness of their heart, then he probably wouldn't have been missing for quite so long. Could Cypher have something to do with Han's reappearance? After all, there are still a lot of things that we don't know about her character, but we do know that she's not above manipulating Dom by using his loved ones. We've seen her blackmail Dom by using his ex Elena and their son in the past, and now it seems like she's collaborating with his brother Jacob. She is not a fan of the Fast family, and it's clear she's been operating behind the scenes for quite some time. Maybe she was keeping tabs on various members of the group, and when Deckard crashed into Han's car, she saw her opportunity. Plus, she already has one of Dom's actual family members on her side, or at least that's what it looks like. The F9 trailer clearly makes it seem as though Jacob and Dom have some unresolved business with each other. After all, there has to be a reason we've never heard Dom or Mia mention him at any point before now. Could this be a classic case of misdirection? Perhaps whatever differences Jacob and his siblings have aren't as bad as they've been made out to be. Maybe Jacob just didn't want to take part in the family barbecues and he and Dom lost touch over the years. Perhaps the real danger in F9 will be the person we least expect. And right above cute little Brian in order of suspicion is Han. I think this doesn't change a thing. Okay, so Han is a good, loyal guy, but that was the Han we met ages ago. Could Cypher have kept him alive in order to control him and use him against Dom and the rest of the Fast family? Seeing Dom forced to turn against his good friend Han would definitely be a heavy-hitting emotional moment, and besides all the car chases and explosions, that's why people enjoy the franchise. While seeing Han as a villain would definitely be upsetting, it's at least preferable to the idea that Han would turn on the family of his own accord. If this fictional universe has the kind of technology used to make Brixton more powerful, then having some kind of mind control device isn't that crazy? Or it's possible she has some kind of leverage over him, whether it's the life of a loved one or a self-destruct button she had installed after the crash. This scenario would also help explain why we haven't seen Han until now. If Cypher is using some kind of mind control on him, that would obviously be a lot more complex than just slapping some cybernetic parts on him and calling it a day. Perhaps she resorted to using Elena and Brian because Han just wasn't ready at that time. It's possible she actually intends for Jacob to be a distraction for Dom while she uses Han to pull off her plan without his interference. In defense of this theory, having one of your best friends suddenly come back from beyond would be a great distraction. While we don't know much for sure about where Han has been, we can assume some things based on what we know about his character. Would Han really have let his friends mourn his loss without a good reason? That just doesn't seem like the kind of thing he would do. And surely, if everyone knew he was still alive, there wouldn't have been a funeral. If he wasn't being detained by someone, the only thing that makes sense would be that he believed he was helping his family by remaining hidden. You can bet on it. As much as the fans love Han, there are plenty of people in the Fast and Furious universe who don't quite feel the same way. Let's not forget that in Tokyo Drift, he managed to anger the Yakuza, which is definitely something that we don't recommend. Han had to cope with the fact that Giselle sacrificed her life for him and understandably took it really hard. It's possible after that, he became even more protective of his family and would do anything to avoid putting them in harm's way. If he thought the Yakuza were responsible for his accident and were out to get him, then linking back up with his family would only endanger the people he cares about. Maybe he thought it would be easier if the Yakuza and everyone else 
House thought he was gone for good, and that's why he's been hidden for so long. Fast and Furious fans know that these characters can survive crazy situations that would be lethal in the real world. All of these stunts aren't exactly realistic, and frankly, the fact that anyone is still alive at this point is pretty hard to believe. Woo! Maybe Han managed to crawl out of the vehicle just in time and survived without needing any kind of cybernetic enhancements. So, what would make him come back now? Well, it could have something to do with the fact that Cypher is back and apparently working with Jacob. Her misdeeds go way past stealing cars or planning heists. She's literally trying to go nuclear. Perhaps Han believes Cypher is a greater threat to his family and the entire world than the Yakuza, and therefore, his reappearance is just a calculated risk. Either that, or he just ran out of snacks wherever he was hiding and had to stock up. However Han manages to return, it's a big deal, and not just for the fans and the other characters in the franchise. Director Justin Lin said that bringing Han back is not something he is taking lightly. He stated that this fictional universe has grown over the years and has allowed storytellers to evolve. Maybe by evolve, he's talking about the kind of tech that brought Brixton lore back from his own accident. Or maybe we just really want to see Cyborg Han. Even actor Sung Kang believed that Han was gone for good back in Tokyo Drift. Only time will tell if we end up getting justice for Han after all of this time. Welcome to the adrenaline-filled world of the Fast and the Furious saga, where one character stands up amidst the high-octane chaos, Han Lu. Portrayed with a perfect blend of humor and heart by Sung Kang, Han isn't just cool under pressure, he's the epitome of it. Today on Screen Rant, we celebrate Han's top 10 moments that cement him as the saga's most beloved character. I think I'm in love. Picture this, a high-speed chase on a Spanish military base in Fast and the Furious 6. Han and Giselle on motorcycles weave through chaos to stop a villainous convoy. In a heart-stopping moment, Han leaps from his bike to a speeding car to save Giselle, showcasing not just his bravery, but their profound bond. Family, a core theme of the franchise, takes a turn with Han. In F9, we learn of his hidden life in Tokyo, where he protects Elle, a young girl pivotal to a global threat. After her parents' tragic death, Han's decision to raise Elle as his own redefines his mysterious absence from the series highlighting his deep compassion and dedication. When you need me, you'd still be shaking down tea houses for chump change if it wasn't for me. Flashback to Fast and the Furious 6, where Han and Giselle's relationship shines during a standoff in a Hong Kong marketplace. Their seamless teamwork against the police not only thrills, but underscores their unwavering support for each other, setting a tragic yet heroic undertone for their journey. Han's supposed demise in Tokyo Drift left fans reeling, marking one of the saga's most heart-wrenching moments. His impactful death not only influences the series' direction, but also ignites a demand for his return, reshaping the franchise with each twist and turn. Han's return in F9, after years of absence, was nothing short of a cinematic reunion. The crew's emotional response to seeing Han alive tugs at the heartstrings, reinforcing his integral role within the chosen family of speedsters and schemers. The Justice for Han movement finds its climax in Fast X, where Han confronts Shaw, the man once believed to have killed him. Their intense fight, filled with unexpected teamwork, evolves into a mutual respect that promises to redefine future alliances. But even heroes face setbacks, as seen in the subway fight in Furious 6. Han and Robin's humorous, yet failed attempt to take down a formidable foe adds a layer of realism and reliability to their invincible persona. No one needs to know about this. Han's mentorship of Shawl in Tokyo Drift encapsulates his core values, trust and character. Their training sessions, filled with frustration and triumph, not only deepens the bond, but also prepares Sean for the challenges ahead weaving Han's legacy even further into the saga's fabric. And who could forget Han's iconic snacking habit? A charming quirk that remains unmatched. It symbolizes his laid-back style amidst the franchise's escalating stakes, making Han a character we continue to root for, snack in hand. From death-defying rescues to poignant moments of connection, Han's journey through the Fast and the Furious saga is a thrilling ride that proves why he's not just a fan favorite, but a legend on and off the screen.